Welcome to Film Feast. Where two sister grill masters watch a movie, yap about it, and then make two recipes inspired by it. Today we're talking all about Mrs. Doubtfire. One of my favorite movies of all time. Me too. I could, we say this about pretty much all the movies we've watched so far except Officer to Gentleman because we've never seen that one. Yeah, why do we love every movie there Every is? movie we've done so far, we're like, we've seen it 92 times. So like, we, I love this one. But we have, this one's one from our childhood. Yes, this is like our generation. <laughs> If you're around our age category, right in the thick of being a millennial, this is the movie for you. Well, basically, if you have not seen Mrs. Doubtfire, it doesn't sound like it would be a real winner, but basically, it doesn't. <laughs> it so it many literally movies, doesn't. So many movies, when you hear the actual plot, you're like, wait, what? That just goes to show you the magic of movies. It's all about the cast, it's all about the script, because the plot itself, it's like, mm, this does not sound like a hit. Okay, so basically, a couple gets divorced, and the dad tries to find a way to be able to see his kids by dressing as a w woman and posing as, uh, posing as a Scottish old lady to try to apply for a job to become their caretaker. And he gets the job and then that's how basically how the movie goes. That to me does not <laughs> scream comedy. It no. sounds sad. It sounds so sad. And terrifying. Like an old man, a man dressing up as an old lady. That to me instantly screams horror movie. It literally, <laughs> it literally does. What was the recipe that you came up with based on Mrs. Doubtfire? Okay, so every time I've seen this movie, this is one of the most popular scenes and part of it was improv. So with Robin Williams, like in many of the movies that he's a part of, Improv was like the name of the game. Mm -hmm. There was a camera, multiple cameras on him at all times in order to catch funny stuff that happened. So watching this movie as a kid and even now as an adult, the part where the caseworker's coming to check on his apartment and he fakes like he has a sister and she goes to make some English tea and he doesn't have his face on, <laughs> So he smashes his face into a, a cake and then there's like icing all over the place. I knew you were gonna do something based on that. How? Because it's literally one of the most famous scenes from the movie. And that's, that's why I specifically did not do that. Cause I was like, we're gonna do a pie. We're both gonna do a cream pie. I did not do a pie. Didn't you did? do a pie, no. Oh! I thought you were gonna do something from that part too, but I just no, because- you're never gonna believe what I did. Okay, I'm scared. It's inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie doing something inappropriate? <laughs> Does it involve genitals somehow? Because it's not this movie. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Literally does. I'm terrified. <laughs> I wanted to take that, every time he has that like on his face with the meringue, it makes me want meringue so bad. Me too. Now, I don't even know if I've ever had meringue. So I wanted to make a vegan version in order for me to taste it and be like, what is this really like? I wanted to do little individual vegan meringues. Ooh. And if you didn't already know, you can use aquafaba, which is literally the liquid in any can of beans. It has to be canned beans, it can't be dried beans. You just buy yourself a can of beans. These are great white northern beans. Drain out the liquid, and there's so much protein in the liquid that it whips up, believe it or not, using cream of tartar into like the same consistency as if you were to use egg whites. Which is so crazy and so cool because most people would just think that's something you just dump down the sink. Yes. But that is a product waiting to happen, which apparently you can make meringue out of it. Yes. So the part that he is wearing that face and he goes to make the tea and it drips down into the tea, that's improv, that didn't make, like obviously you can't invent that happening. Yeah. So it dripped down because the set was so hot. So it's, it's that part that makes me want it the most because then the old lady goes and like puts it on her face yeah, and like when tries she, it. When she put it on her face and then tasted it, that made me want it so bad. Yes, me too. So I was like, I have to try these. Now I wanted to make these um, colored. <clears throat> Ooh. Take a look at the shirt I'm wearing. <coughs> Did you match this to your shirt? I matched it identical. I couldn't have done this better if I tried and I did try. What's with us trying to match our food to our clothing? I don't understand why we have like such an infatuation with that. But look at this beautiful pink. I love that little pink color. I love that color. So I was like, let's try to Isn't make- Isn't that millennial pink? I think it is. It is. This is we're a... millennials through and through. So the, I was like, let's try to make these pink. Although in the movie, obviously it's white, but I was like, let's just try to make these a little bit better. Yeah, putting your own spin on it. And That's adding the some- the cool thing about the show. I just wanted to put a little bit of beetroot powder in there. You don't have to, but if you've never made meringues before, it does not get easier than this. It's literally like four ingredients. The aquafaba, cream of tartar, a little vanilla, and the beetroot powder. Oh, and sugar, that's, lots of sugar. Okay, but that's, yeah, because that's obviously what's making it go from like, just like a, li a gross liquid that's come from beans into a flavorful, sweet dessert. Yeah, so you can't use, I don't like using white sugar and stuff. I prefer to always use like honey or maple that's, syrup. That's five beans. 
Look how fluffy it is. Okay, but could you do this without a mixer? Because a lot of people out there might not have one of these fancy mixers. We didn't for years. Barbecue Pops got us that. You probably could. It would just take a lot longer. More elbow grease. Yeah. So this is like the consistency of the movie. You smash that on your face, you could recreate that scene if you really wanted to. Okay, can I just say that scene? There's many scenes in this movie that are so suspenseful that I almost can't watch them, even though I've seen this movie like 92 times. The restaurant and part, I had to fast forward. The restaurant part is the most time that makes me go, like, I can't watch it. I had to fast forward. I'm always like, I know it's coming. Yeah, fast forwarding is the option here. I had to, because we just watched the movie to get refreshed on, obviously, for this episode. I couldn't watch it. I was like, I don't know what's happening to me in my older years. I couldn't take it. I'm like, the fact that it's all going to come crashing down, the family's going to know he's not going to get that job. Like, I just couldn't handle it. I had to, I was like, no, let's get right back to... Okay, but the pie scene you probably could watch because there, nothing got exposed. There was nothing, like, negative that happened from this scene. No, he and... got away with it. Yes, and I wanted to see the, um, the, uh, the cake situation. That is such a good cover-up. It that is! That he thought of just, like, smashing his face into the cake. I love this movie so much. It's such a feel-good, heartwarming movie. Robin Williams is one of those actors that it's like Jim Carrey. So apparently Tim Allen was almost offered that role and the role of Stu, the sleazy boyfriend. Yeah, which I thought that was boyfriend. weird. That yeah. was so weird that like Tim he Allen. offered both roles. Like, and I'm like, Tim Allen doesn't play sleazy, who could not play like a sleazy oh, boyfriend like that. Oh, I think like he that. does. He, I think he does. Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Tim the Tool Man Taylor has always had an underlying element of sleaze to me. He has. Really? Yes. He has. Get that gorgeous color. Okay, so it's identical to my shirt. I was like, let's add a little bit more. Let's add a little bit more. I didn't want to get it too like fuchsia, but I was like, let's see. I don't know if I'm close to the shirt and somehow it's spot on. You nailed it, buddy. You absolutely nailed it. So it's very just like sweet, tastes like nothing really to me. Like these meringues are very much like, like so tasting just the raw mixture right here. Look at, look at the color. Okay. Spot on. Gorgeous. Did you do a little dab on the cheek? Like I was tempted. Because I would have wanted to do that. With the beans, I feel like beans could go good on the face, you know? I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> like the raw flavor of just the batter here is like very much like tastes of, remind me of those like macarons. Ooh. Like just sweet flavor. So if you don't have a pastry bag, get yourself a Ziploc bag. I prefer that. I'm not... I don't have the fancy stuff. It's disposable, then you don't need to wash it out. Yeah, and I don't make enough fancy stuff like this, like for like baking wise, to, to invest in like the, the piping tips and all that stuff. Agreed, but I will say I have done this before, and I like that you went with the large freezer bags because I've done it with the small sandwich bags. Oh. It, that don't work. They'll just bust at the sides. They bust at the sides. I've done it. It's not strong enough. You got to go for the. You've done it too. I've done it too. See, like. You got to go with the thicker plastic. And if you're, take it from me, don't snip too big a hole. Because I've also done that where you make the hole too big and it ends up just blobbing. It's too much. You don't want it. It comes out too fast and it's too much of a big blob. Yeah, go smaller and then see if you need to go up. Yeah. Okay. So I found this to be extremely satisfying. Yeah, blobbing just watching these out. that, come on. Now, I this is my first experience. Like, I, I don't bake this type of baking a lot. I didn't know if these were going to expand. I was like, okay, we're just going to, like, do I leave room in between? Do I not? I had no clue. These are cooked at a low temperature, so 200 degrees. I used the Ninja outdoor oven, the wood fire outdoor oven. I didn't put the pellets in because I thought that would be raunchy. Mm, no, like, that would too be too much. much. Way too much. Way too much. Especially because these are in for an hour and a half. Oh, no. Heck no. I'm like, for that would be little cr crisps of disgustingness. Yeah, like, just smoke flavor tastes good on desserts, yes. But Not for that something much. that's going on that long, no. And, like, the flavor of this is so delicate, the smoke would just overpower it. Yeah, so you just slide <laughs> them in. It's such a low temperature that I had to use the smoke <coughs> function because the bake temperature Oh, they did expand a bit. They did. And so you'll look, you'll see oh, they're my touching. Goodness. So the minute you take them out, they're kind of like chewy and they like they goo apart kind of. Okay, these are stunning. But then as they sit, they crunch up and they get like really crispy. Ooh. Super crispy. So you're just like snapping them off. The texture is really nice. I could see these like in a fancy restaurant, like broken up. Like, you know how restaurants have like little bits of stuff yes. on like cakes and whatever? Like little crunchy powder and stuff. Yeah, I could totally see this. So right now I had just oh, taken yeah. them out of the oven and they were kind of chewy. 
They reminded me of sponge toffee, kind of. That's like a pavlova. This is really my, yes. This is exactly. These are just like mini pavlovas. Yeah. So I That's was what meringue is. I was very satisfied that I had finally gotten to taste this, especially because every time I see that scene in the movie, I'm like, what does that cake taste like? Mm -hmm. And so it's not technically, I don't think it is a meringue in the in the movie. I think it's icing. I always pictured it like a coconut cream pie. Yeah, me too. But if you look at the movie and I watch the movie back, it's not. It's a cake. Is it? It is. He has a cake there. But it, but so he puts his head in the cake. But then when he comes out, it looks clearly like he's put it in like a meringue pie. It satisfied my craving. These are real winners. If you have someone that's plant-based in your life or you want to give these a try, they're super easy to do. You can make like 500 of them with one can of beans. No ingredients Very whatsoever. Cheap. Very cheap and cheerful. I love a cheap and cheerful and also stunningly gorgeous. Now, please tell me what you made. I'm scared to tell you what I made. I'm scared to hear what you made. <laughs> If you're giving it that preface, buddy, it's going to be bad. Okay, but I need to preface this by saying when I'm watching any movie or show or anything, if they mention any type of food, I instantly want that food. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, like, if someone mentions, like, sour cream and onion chips and I'm watching a movie, even though if I'm super full, I instantly want that. Very so suggestible. So, that's where, let me just slowly dive into this, okay? So, my recipe that is inspired from the movie Mrs. Doubtfire comes from the dinner scene that we were talking about earlier where it's like suspense city. It's terrifying. He's running, Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin Williams is running from Ugh. a meeting with a TV network executive back to his family who's celebrating Miranda's birthday. Can I just say something here? Why would he agree to both? That was in his control. Okay, not the TV exec. It wasn't exec. in his control. He st he tried to change the, the meeting. No, the he family. Couldn't. He could have easily said the mom, I, because I was like, I watched this so many times. The mom asked, Miranda asked, Do you, can you make it to dinner? He was like, no, I have plans. She was like, please. And then the cute little daughter was like, can you come? Who's going to say no to that little cutie patootie? I'd be like, I don't care, you little brat. I got a meeting with the TV executive. <laughs> That girl is adorable. I would just melt, okay? And that's why he said yes, and he went with it, but it was not the right call. <laughs> My recipe comes from this scene. Miranda has to go to the washroom with the little daughter. Mrs. Doubtfire suggests the other kids go look at dessert, okay? It's just Mrs. Doubtfire and Stu one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Yeah. After Stu just gives Miranda a piece of jewelry, Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin Williams, is feeling that Stu is doing that because he wants a little more. I was dying okay. at that part. <laughs> That's where we lock in here. The okay? horizontal mambo. <laughs> okay. Mrs. Doubtfire tells Stu, oh, I think you want a little something more. Someone's given a piece of jewelry like that. Uh, maybe you want to sink the sub, you know, hide the weasel. Park the porpoise, a bit of the old Humpty Dumpty, the horizontal mambo, the bone dancer, rumble foreskin, the baloney bop. <laughs> I heard baloney bop instantly. I haven't had baloney in years. I loved baloney. Instantly, we are making baloney bop cups. Nice. Not the most appropriate thing. I looked it up. I'm not going to say what that means. I'll let that be in your Google search because it's now in mine. Okay. <laughs> I got to figure out a way to delete that. Clear somehow. out, man. I got to clear it out. out. Okay. So I made baloney <coughs> bop cups. And on that note, I need to ban myself off of egg recipes. Okay. I don't know what's with me, but the last couple recipes I've made have been egg based. So I love my eggs. I'm done with eggs for the next little while. Yeah, but why not? Eggs are good. They're cheap. They're accessible. They're a complete food. I eat them literally every single day. So that's why I was inspired here. A lot of people do. Eggs for lunch? Eggs for dinner, <laughs> eggs for any time of day, okay? Oh, now, bologna I is just so good. also wanted an excuse to get bologna because I literally have not had it in years. And let me tell you, there's something about ripping into that pack and smelling it instant childhood. Yeah. It'll bring you back. It's the summer days on the street making yourself a bologna sandwich with mayo and mustard. That's it. Incredible. Yes. Oh, my good heavens. I love bologna. Okay, and it makes a fantastic cup. So when I put those into the silicone muffin cups, at first I was like, okay, hey, these are like looking flimsy. They're looking flamsy here. But then I was like, I'm going to cut this and make it into an actual cup. Ooh. And, it and I just cut two, two small cuts and it made a perfect cut. Hmm. Interesting. 
Bologna's doing double duty here, flavor and vessel. Exactly, and so like you could do, obviously, like egg cups are not like the, like a groundbreaking thing. You've seen them before, but I totally recommend using bologna with them. I also love a good canned shroomy. I know you do. I love having them on standby, they're super cheap. They're good to have on hand when you when you want to add some little bit of shrimp. They taste like a drain. Excuse me? <laughs> They're that gross. That is disgusting. <laughs> They're gross. Okay, look it. Is that not super cool? Look at it just flick out into a perfect cup. That is cool. I like was so proud of myself on that. That's a really great idea. Now, did it fit an egg? Because sometimes an egg, I hate when you try to do this and the egg lays like dripping no, out. No, it fit an egg perfectly, okay? So we also went, went in with a little green onion and we also went in with a little um, cheddar that's not shredded. I did cubes because I feel like sometimes um, shredded gets lost. You can't even taste it. Sometimes I want a little bit of chunkage, you know? I will, I like to point out something that I noticed in this movie that was, I think, groundbreaking at the time and since I haven't really seen it a lot in movies. Hmm. Pierce Brosnan is seven years younger than Sally Field. Weird, I didn't know that. Okay, and in, in Hollywood, it's always older man, 20-something girl. Yeah, when does that ever happen? As now? the love interest. So I thought it was super cool that Pierce Brosnan was cast. He's younger than Sally Field. They, he does appear, like they both do look like they're around, around the same age. Around kind of, yeah. the same age, but that's like unheard of in Hollywood. And I like that he's like admiring her for her career. Yes, like, like that's he's also so weird. impressed with her career. Yeah, although I will say another movie that I don't feel aged well. You could not recreate this movie today and have it be appropriate with younger people. Why? Because of the whole gender talk, the whole talk about gender, like the song, even the fact that they play um, Aerosmith, Dude Looks Like a Lady. Like I feel like that excuse song me, has aged me. out. We're not, we're not even stepping the Aerosmith. Okay? But like listening to the lyrics while that song, while that listening, watching that movie, I was like, you couldn't get away with that today. No, you couldn't. But I, I love this movie, and you gotta appreciate a movie for how when it was made in its time. You, you do. You do, but I, th I think a lot of it would get some backlash. All right, now I'd like to hit you with a little fact here about the movie. Um, apparently, it took over four and a half hours for Robin Williams to transform into Mrs. Doubtfire because he had the prosthetics, the wig, the getup, like the he even had a bodysuit on, which I love that they showed that in the movie. Mm -hmm, like me when, too. During your scene, yes. during the pie scene, him trying to scramble and put that thing on. I got sweaty at that because I could feel that he was getting sweaty. I know. Oh my god. <laughs> this movie literally <laughs> plays on your emotions so much. Mm -hmm. The suspense, um, but. So it took four and a half hours to get into that getup, and he, Robin Williams, wanted to go traipsing around the street, and he walked around wearing the Mrs. Doubtfire getup. Did you know he went into an adult store? Yes, I did. Because he wanted to see if he could trick people wearing that, and what it would, what, if people would believe that he's this old lady, and it worked. Can you imagine, like months later, when you see this movie come out, and you're like, I think I saw that person roaming around the street. Did you also know that they won an Academy Award? <coughs> Yes, I did. And rightly so. That is so cool. For that makeup, that amount of makeup that went in. I also love that little montage with um with the with the aunt and uncle. Uncle Jack or Aunt Jack. <laughs> yes, I, I thought that. that was so awesome. That is so cute. And I love that like the different looks that they tried on before they finally landed on Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. Me that too. Part. That that whole montage was awesome, but the whole movie is incredible. Something else I'd like to point out that watching it with adult eyes as opposed to watching it with younger eyes, the scene at the beginning where Robin Williams goes against Miranda's wishes and has a party. Okay? There's animals in the house, there's kids jumping on the couch. When I was little, I was like, oh, let, let, let them do the party, let them have the party. As an adult, I'm like, oh, heck no. I know, and I also didn't like that he was like the fun one, and he's like the one that's like making the kids have fun, and the mom's like a buzzkill. Yep. Did not like that I either. I did not like that one. I'm bit. like, what would she like about this? She's working all day. Now she has to come home and deal with this. He said he would clean it up, but like, I didn't like that one bit either. These cups were super delectable. The bologna, if you're not a bologna fan, you don't, you're obviously, I'm not gonna convince you with this recipe, but if you are a bologna fan, oh heck yes, you're going to love this. The cheese, they were simple, because they only had a couple ingredients, but I've been eating these for breakfast, for lunches. They're great to just have on hand because you just make a couple, pop them in the fridge, and then you have like your lunch and your breakfast all week. I love how this movie ended.
It ended realistically. Apparently, the original ending was supposed to have um, Daniel and, and um, Daniel and Miranda getting back together at, after they got divorced. But the producers realized that they were like, we can't be like showing kids that divorced couples end up getting back together. So they ended up having a good relationship, but they remained divorced, which I thought was super cool and super ahead of its time. It was kind of like, if you look at the ending and how dramatic it was and she's watching Mrs. Doubtfire on the TV, <gasps> it's like, it's not saying they didn't get back together. If you listen to what Mrs. Doubtfire is saying, it's like, sometimes things work out, sometimes they don't. Okay, but that's- I speech. almost fall. Well, I know. I'm like, as a child, I thought that was so sad, but as an adult, I literally was like, this movie has so much, so many good parts, but the ending, so perfect. It's like they leave it kind of open-ended. Yes. They're cool with each other, but it's over. And sometimes things are over and there's nothing wrong with that. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> What is wrong with us? <laughs> is it that time of the month? <laughs> if you could, so if you could make a recipe inspired by Mrs. Doubtfire, what would you make and why? Let us know in the comments below. And please help us choose our next movie because this is a ton of fun. You guys have been sending in some fantastic suggestions. Oh, some really good ones. We have some really good ones coming up.